my dad was in the uh, was in the business uh, when we grew up. He was he was Mr. Showbiz. You know, he said in the early fifties, variety was dying, and my act helped kill it. That was his joke. <laughs> and he did everything from a step up <laughs> to a manager. He was a cruise director on ships. He was an agent. He was a he, he was a singer, professional singer with the Four Jones Boys. And we we just grew up um, in showbiz. And all, all my sisters are involved. You know, uh, you know, Kate, Jane, Emma, and Amy were my younger sisters. And uh, my mum had a first cousin called Mike McCartney, who had a group called Scaffold. Yeah, Billy the Pink, and he had another brother who had a band as well, a Merseyside band, Paul, somebody, and they didn't do bad either. So, um, <laughs> what was that show? You, what was your dropped. show in the? Oh, sorry, I missed. Sorry, Ted, what was that? Well, I said Mike McCartney or Mike <laughs> McGear, and he had an elder brother who was also in a band. Yeah, you see, rather than sorry. go on and on and on about <laughs> my mother's first cousin was James Paul McCartney, <laughs> but nobody's ever heard it, of him. That's not. That's a joke, isn't it? He did, no, no, that's not no, his. Paul, no, what? Paul, Paul and my mum are first. You know when people do that. Who's the most famous person on your phone? Well, that's Mr. Macker. Yeah. Oh, Paul, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. And if you phone? if you listen, you know he brought a book out called "Hey, you know, I'm going to do an impression like you know who, but um, <laughs> he sort of does this book about songs me and John wrote. You know, great, yeah. and uh. A guy called Stevie Nicks does a great impression. <laughs> we do the rest of and it like this, please. He wrote a he wrote a song called Teddy Boy, which is on his first album called McCartney. And you know, um, it goes, "This is the story of a boy named Ted," and he was sort of inspired. He was lying New Year's Eve. We had a big family, uh, and still have, and and all the uncles and cousins and aunties, and my uncle Jim, who was Paul's dad, or well, my great uncle, Uncle Joe. Uh, my mum and dad, Auntie Jim, who was Paul's auntie, who helped bring him up. You know the song, Someone's Knocking at the Door, Let Him In. So Cousin yeah. Mary, Auntie Jim. Well, Auntie what? Jim, when Paul's and Mike's mum died in 1956, Mary, they kind of, with my mum, all the cousins and all the uncles and aunties used to look after Paul and Mike because they were 14 and 13 and they grew up. So I, I grew up you know, listening, and, and my auntie said, listen, Cousin Paul's on the radio, you know, and um, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's a strange thing, because you know, you know, people my say everyone in Liverpool, my, uh, my auntie used to scrub Ringo Star steps and all that, but you know, he, he's, um, he and Mike, I see more of Mike, but I see Paul occasionally, and he, he rings us up, how are you doing, so, you know, and all that. But uh, I'll tell you a funny look... story. Oh, yeah, go on, sorry. Story. We've got a, a, a cousin called Ronnie Fogg, and he's the most scouse man. And you can you use rude, rude words in this? Yeah, you can, because you, you're young, aren't you? You'll swear. Yeah, I was yeah, never do in my day. Please. 69 this year. Uh, <laughs> Ronnie was um, married into, into Auntie Jin's family. He was, he was Auntie Jin's son-in-law, wasn't he? And he worked on the ferries, and he's the most scouse man in the world, Ronnie. He's a fucking great guy. And he holds the world record to saying the word fucking most times in one word. He said he was one of them into fucking constant fucking constant fucking mental missiles. But uh, <laughs> he's, he's like the fool to Paul's King Lear, because whenever, you know, Ian and Jackie, God rest them, who was his... his uh, father-in-law uh they had a big house they had nine kids got and um with everyone used to pile in and, and paul would come as well you know um like every, it was just a family do you know what i mean there's two paul mccartney's in my life there's sir paul mccartney who's mpl and you don't get anywhere near him his answer or something and there's paul mac and he comes to the do's and great but ronnie he just cuts straight to the quick and goes hey paul Here's a million fucking tight cunt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul laughs. Because the first time I heard him, I went, bloody hell, you know. Yeah, yeah. Paul, give a mill. He could afford it. He said, hey, Ronnie, you know, <laughs> you don't need a mill. You just need love. He said, oh, that's a fucking love. You give a mill. <laughs> yeah. so, um, there we are. That's enough name dropping. As I said to Elton John in the bath this morning. 
Wow. So he's Sir Paul McCartney and he's just Paul Mac. That's the other. Yeah, yeah. And then this thing about calling him Macca, we'd never, you know, it was Paul Mac, Mike Mac, his brother, Johnny Mac, who's another cousin, Uncle Joe's son. Um, Keith Mac sadly passed away, who was Uncle Jack's son. There were six uncles and aunties, and my grandmother, Annie McCartney, was uh, Paul's dad's sister. There you are. So has he, he, has he ever done a little private gig for you, just at Christmas? Just got yeah, good... yeah. You know, my mum's 70th, God rest her, he came down to Kate's. Kate was living in, in Bedfordshire, in, in Tebworth, I think. And he came and said, he, he had a lovely, she had a lovely piano there. You know our Kate, dear, Kate Roberts. Yeah. She was in Afterlife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, um, yeah. She, lovely. You know, Paul, there were always family sing songs at the, you know, ha the Harris family, McCartney's, the Robinses. Everyone loves singing. And and um, he, he'd come down and, you know, he just loved, loved showing off. And I remember once he just sat down, hey, I'll go. And he went straight in, did Lady Madonna yesterday, you know, and all these things. Do you know, and Ridiculous. when the Beatles were really on the up, listen to this, we used to get set, we lived in Bebbington on the Wirral. And, um, Paul actually sorted my mum and dad's house out. They were pretty skint at the time. And um, anyway, that, that's another story. And uh, it, it, he, um, Paul, Paul, Paul used to send, or Apple as it was then, would send all this stuff, records, you know, all the LPs with factory sampled off for sale, uh, Sergeant Pepper album, you know, sign, all this stuff. And we we get it, and there was always a party in our house. This is absolutely true. And we used to put it on the record player, and we say, "Hey, listen to this, the new Beatles song. Wow, fantastic!" And all this stuff. And we once had an acetate recording. This is how long ago it was of Paul singing the long and winding road. It was as it was only grooved on one side, and it was flat at the bottom, and it was a factory sample, not for sale. And it was before it was orchestrated. It's just Paul singing. The long and winding road all the way through. He said, Listen, that's lovely, that, isn't it? And it just disappeared from our house. You oh. know? God, imagine. Because oh. people came in and out all the time because Paul and John had come come and see us, you know. You, uh, you, John you met John. Well. You met John Lennon. John, oh, Kate and I were in um, oh my God. 1969. I'm mean, sorry, this sounds like non stop name dropping, but it's no, a, I bloody I'm, love it, Ted. Heaven, and in, yeah, in some ways, it's a great thing. And for some members of our family, I won't name names, it's kind of screwed their lives up a bit because what? if you compare, you know what I mean? Right, oh, I see, I see, yeah. and, all that. and, you know, if you become a dentist, great, you know. But I, th mm. I think Mike, his brother, who's a, the loveliest of men and talented. But his fear is on his gravestone that like here lies Paul McCartney, his brother, you know. Oh, but dude, um, but hard, uh, it? no, he does, and he's long made up be, you know. And he, he is lovely, Mike. And oh, I'll just pause for breath. Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> I remember what I was talking about. Well, oh yeah, in sixty nine, <laughs> nineteen sixty nine, I was about fourteen. Um, my dad was manager of the uh, Talk of the Town in London. And Paul idolised me, Dad. If you, if you read a book called Many Years From Now, Paul talks about Mike Robbins. And um, my dad was in and out of show business, and uh, he and John worshipped him because he'd had professional experience and had cut a disc or two with a group called the Four Jones Boys in the 50s. They were like Britain's answer to the four, the swing, the four freshmen who you'll have never heard of close four-part vocal harmony very smooth and slick you know and smart jackets and all that. They, they were britain's answer to that i mean dad was was in that group for a while and he got out of show business and, and he ran a pub called the fox and hounds in uh caversham which is near reading and right. i remember i'm just old i was about six seven and paul and john used to come down and stay in the holidays. And my dad, and this is actually Radio Berkshire celebrated this about the 50th anniversary, because this folk legend had built up, which wasn't a legend, but my dad said, right lads, and they were about 17, 18. He said, uh, you need, right, you're gonna 
sing for your supper. So they worked washing up pots in the pub and, and he put them on in the tap room. He said, you need, you need a name, you need a name. So he said, he thought up this name, um, Paul, which appealed to John. And it's, it was a Spike Milligan word called Nurk, you silly Nurk, <laughs> like the goons. And, so, yeah. and John loved uh, the goons and all that. So he called them the Nurk twins. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he put them on in the evening and they played the Nerf Twins, Paul and John. And he, my dad had this big thing about acts. He said, what's your first number? And um, uh, Paul said, uh, we, well, we do bebop a you know, bebop a He said, no, no, too, too slow. A good act in anything, comedy, music, whatever you're doing, should be like a capital W. So you should start strong at the beginning, maybe come down a little bit, strong middle, come down a little bit and finish strong at the end. Shouldn't be like an M. Start low, mm. build mm. up, oh, go right. down, build up, go down. And Paul said he always, so they started off with an old song called The World is Waiting for Its Sunrise, which you can look up. I looked it up a while ago and it's very fast beat and uh, they, they knew the chords to that, you know. And they they they, they just idolised him and uh, in later years, my mum didn't come, but my dad took Kate and I, I was 14, to London for two or three days. And it was 69 and the Beatles were just on the last kind of, you know, Yoko was, they met Yoko Ono. And we stayed at Paul's house and we were in Studio Two of Abbey Road and um, we just sat and it was Easter time. I always oh. remember I was 14 and we sat on these stools, you know, watching the Beatles recording them. Uh, Mal, obviously Paul knew us and, and John knew us as well. And he was always very kind with kids, John. He had, you know, all sorts of, I could tell you stories about Paul's 21st and things that John, you know, uh, anyway, uh, he, he came over and he said, hi kids, and he had these round specs. And we said, hi John, you know, he said, do you like chocolate? And me and Kate said, yeah. He said, Mal, and Mal Evans was his roadie. Oh, yeah, the Mal Evans, a great big guy who, uh, he was later shot in, in America in nefarious circumstances. And everywhere the Beatles went, there were these great sacks of sweets and cards and chocolate. And, and it was in an age when this was 1969. So there, weren't, there wasn't that much chocolate everywhere as there is now. And John went around and found this giant chocolate rabbit that an American fan had sent. He said, there you go, kids. So we unpeeled this chocolate rabbit and listened to them recording over and over again a George Harrison song called Not Guilty, which later George released as a single by himself, but they never recorded it as the Beatles, but they, they rehearsed, and I kept thinking, why are they doing it again and again? Mm -hmm. Hours and hours, you know, and uh, that's just one of the memories, you know, which is uh, fab. But do, do, they, do they feel special to you now? Or yeah, is it just part, now, yeah. They're, Well, when you look back, do you think, Wow. Or is it just part of the family? And No, I do think, wow. And I do think, I, I, this is, you know, I don't talk about it very much because, you know, people have no idea, unless you were there, what Beatlemania was, you know, and to actually be related to one, mm. they don't realise, you know, because fandom and, you know, oh, we, we, we need, I'm not knocking, take that or whoever it is. You know, they used to scream in hordes and everything, but this was something else. This was. Did you, did you, did you see, did you witness it firsthand? So, like being with yeah, Paul yeah, McCartney and to, people um, going nuts. My dad, one of his many other jobs, I've got a photograph of him somewhere, actually. Do you want me to show you a photo? Yes, yeah. please. Hang on. I'll just have to get up here. Hang on. Get it off the wall. There you go. There's a. Now, this was taken by Brother Mike, Mike <gasps> McCartney, and that's me. Can you see? No! It? That's me, Mum. Oh, my God. I've just, seen, I've just seen who's in the middle. And that's Paul playing the guitar. Have you got the ice, ice cream, cream stuffed in your face, basically? The what? Are you, are you the little boy with an ice cream stuffed in his face? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mike McCartney, I was practicing on a microphone. But that's me, Mum, Betty, who was a great beauty. And, oh, uh, lovely! And, and what an amazing Paul, photo! Where was that Paul, taken, Ted? That was taken in Filey when my dad was entertainment manager at Butlins, and the, the lads came down, 
And uh, when I say lads, I mean Paul and Mike. What is he, 17 there? Or was he, how old is he? No, old long, he? younger. I'm about four, three, no, two. So Paul's about 15, 16 there. And he's already got oh, a guitar yeah. in his hand. Yeah, yeah. It's he clearly, it's guitar, clearly him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my mum used what? to help him play because she played the banjo lately and she was left-handed, my mum, like Paul. So she taught him left-handed chords, you know. So that was... Um, oh, yeah, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's, it's fantastic. It was in 